Press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates from Walkspace. A storyboard is the, is the first look at the film. You know, where you, you can actually f go down the board and see the film. So it's, it's by definition, it's, it's what is about to go onto celluloid. I found that I uh, get great enjoyment out of just sitting in a car and staring at the landscape if I'm being driven. Um, and whether I'm going through an industrial area or a obviously beautiful area, um, I'm always fascinated by what I boil down to really the performance of light on objects. And even industrial is beautiful, right? So I started to see that early on when I was a um, kid because I've always painted and drawn more than usual. My most informative years were art school, post-grammar school. Um, I didn't uh, really enjoy school. And uh, I basically woke up when I went to art school and uh, spent seven years at art school, which is fairly standard if you're heading towards the teaching profession. Um, four years provincial and then three years at somewhere higher level, which was the, happened to be the Royal College of Art. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty, I'm pretty highly trained in that area and therefore have always been able to lend, lend my hand to and be able to talk about with pretty well every department which deals with anything that would come under the heading of art or art, like costume, like uh, set design obviously. And the storyboard starts off in my mind as I'm actually reading the script and I can literally get flashes on the location of which will very often actually give me a reason to choose that particular location because I start to see the scene in the room or on the location or wherever it is and I can literally get images bing bing in the head and then that gets put down I start to thumbnail scribble things thinking that yeah this will work this is, this is fine you know thumbnails are awfully fast if you know what you're doing and I'm a draftsman so I can really thumbnail something down as the state of play for the day it, it literally as I'm going there in the morning in the car um, and it's a, like a refresher course on what you're about to do. And everybody finds their own way, I think, whether you're an actor or whether you're a director. You find your own way going there that morning. Um, so when you hit the set, you know exactly what you, you've got a target. And uh, sometimes I don't leave it that late. Sometimes it's, it's done way earlier, and if, in which case is I just glance through the boards and I may have some new thoughts that morning as I'm going in, in which case then there'll be notations to the board or thumbnails on the board to remind me that this may be better or that may be better, you know. It's like a rehearsal for me. So I think that's why very often when I hit the set, I know exactly what I want to do because I've talked through it with the storyboard artist. In fact, it's almost like the talking through with the storyboard artist that has almost prepared me totally to, because uh, you have to articulate exactly what you're going to do. And uh, so when I hit the floor to do a scene, or whether it's, you know, whatever it is, um, I usually, uh, you know, ask the actors if they don't mind, but should I just suggest what we're going to do? And um, uh, rarely do they say, well, you know, why are we doing it that way? So it seems to work out. It seems to get distilled in that discussion. So they all seem to be perfectly happy about saying, sounds like a good plan, let's do it. You know, this is nothing new what I, that I'm practicing. Um, uh, it goes back to the great, you know, filmmakers of the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. I think Hitchcock was the one who was the main, was a very pu much publicized um, you know, user of a storyboard and he would stick to the storyboard uh, which doesn't mean that he couldn't vie away from it if he saw something more interesting on the day. Doing a, a board which starts from a thumbnail to a polished board I think is a bit like being a writer. They will start you know in the left hand corner of the canvas or page and work right through. They'll do a pass and just and the, the key on painting is to actually uh, what I always found for me, get rid of the white, get rid of the white canvas. Um, get something ac right across the canvas. Um, otherwise, if you don't, you're always looking at that area of white, which is like a blank sheet. 
And so a writer, I think writers very often like to bash through the script. That's why they don't like to hand in pages, because they like to rework. And as Steve, the, I've worked with him twice now, he has phrases, I like to come back and massage the page or massage the script in areas, because very often he'll bash down a scene because he doesn't want to spend time on it. I think, as the way he works, gets it down, knowing it has to be there, but I'll come back and make it better because a screenplay is organic, right? So something may occur here, but then occur there. So you want to come back later and deal with that and change it or make it better. Same with storyboards. You start off with thumbnails, and then if I'm getting really interested in the scene, think, oh, I've just seen. When I draw, I get sucked into the scene. So when I'm sucked into the scene, I start to visualize other opportunities, which aren't just um, pictures. There may be suggestions for actors, the way the scene can go how you can adjust and maybe even finally how the words are used, you know? Um, so I, when I do that, I, it's abstract because, in fact, it's wasting time because I'm sitting there and I'll start to really finish a frame. And then uh, and I'll sometimes just finish a frame so it's really, really drawn shaded dark light get me anatomy right. Um, and then I'll move on with thumbnails. But in a funny kind of way, it's like a thumbprint for the storyboard artist to go, oh, OK, that's what it's like, and then to work with that. You don't draw every frame in every cut. Well, if something gets tricky, I will virtually draw every frame in every cut. Um, and you find a way of thumbnailing, adding with big frames and small frames. So in fact, a storyboard becomes rather like a sophisticated comic strip. Well, in fact, now comic strips are very sophisticated. And um, ideally, that's what a storyboard should be, because you're seeing the dynamics of, you know, and if it's really well drawn, then you can follow the dynamics of the sequence. And um, even if it's dialogue, you can always do something with a dialogue scene that isn't just two talking heads. But then, uh, of course, two talking heads can also be interesting, you know. So it's knowing where to pull back. Other people now go to great lengths of actually doing electronic storyboards where I can plan walking into this house, walk into this room, circle the room, and the camera, the, story, the, this, the electronic process will allow someone to see exactly what you'll see in that room. I don't need that. I don't like that. But people do and plan it that way. You can either get it in cage form on the computer, or you can go further and fill it in and color the walls and put in the furniture. You literally go the whole hog if you want. But I don't need to do that, fortunately. It takes too long. I think, amusingly, I've always been accused of being over-designed and over-thought out in, in, with the visual aspects of uh, the films I do. And I used to take that on board initially because I, I, I got rather depressed about the fact that Julius was classified as too beautiful. and. Uh, and Alien was a bit light on characterization and all on dynamics. And Blade Runner was criticized, be, I think, as, as to having a simplistic story, albeit a very depressing story, um, set against this ever reigning, ever, you know, ever growing darkness, right? And um, now I think I'll just stay with the plan. <laughs>